Back to the future. Could it actually happen with a real time machine? That's tonight's IDEA, our series on new ideas. It's time into a loop. I can go from the past to the present to the future, but I'm on a loop, so I can go from the future back to the past. Throughout history, people have been fascinated by the idea of time travel. Whether it's going back in time to witness historical events or glimpsing into the future, it sparks our curiosity. Even in popular movies like Interstellar and Marvel films, time travel is a central theme that captures our imagination. While some doubt its possibility, there are stories from individuals who claim to have experienced it firsthand. For example, two reporters reportedly saw a major news event before it happened. Could time travel be real? Let's explore this intriguing concept of time travel and how it will affect the society if it came true. Missouri Time Traveler. Missing after 1997. Mike Markham, an electrical engineering student from Stanbury, Missouri, who was 21 years old at the time, began working on making a time machine in early 1995. He planned to visit the future to get rich and find lottery numbers that would win big. It was said that he didn't have any official training. He used to do his tests on the porch of his house in his backyard, which resembled a junkyard with toasted appliances, old remotes, and CD players. Mike noticed something odd as he played with the machine called Jacob's Ladder. Mike was messing around with Jacob's Ladder, which he had transformed. It had a 20,000-volt electrical transformer that was made at home. People in the U.S. usually have 120, 240 volts in their homes, so Mike had to make this generator. Mike used wire hangers and lasers to heat the air around the conductors in Jacob's ladder. This was done to avoid air pressure and temperature changes that could mess up the experiment. Mike said he saw a ring-shaped swirl eight inches across while working with the machine. He figured he would test the effect by frequently throwing in a sheet metal screw to see what would happen. According to Mike, every time he threw it in, the screw vanished and reappeared a few feet away a second later. The metal screw, in his view, had been transported through time, reappearing when time had caught up. Seeing what had happened with this experiment, Mike was determined to go the extra mile. He would build a time machine that would be 8 feet instead of the 8-inch Jacob's Ladder he had used for the initial experiment. But Mike had a huge challenge ahead of him. He needed a lot of power to advance his research to the point where it could work for humans. Furthermore, it caught fire while he was speeding up his efforts on the so-called time machine. Unbothered, Mike reasoned that if he rebuilt the machine, he should use larger transformers to achieve higher voltages. However, that would cost him roughly $20,000 for each transformer, so he broke into a local power station and stole six old transformers to continue his job. However, when he linked the transformers to Jacob's ladder, he caused a big blackout on the streets of his neighborhood, cutting off the electrical system for several hours. Soon after, cops arrived with a warrant to search his residence and arrested him for stealing the transformers. Mike supposedly revealed to the judge during his trial that he was looking for the lottery-winning numbers to raise funds for a research facility. After being freed from prison a few months later, Mike became well-known on local radio for telling stories about the missing screw and his desire to build a time machine. The radio show Art Bell's radio show often discussed paranormal issues. Mike was instantly identified as a madman by the presenter, Art and he gladly accepted the nickname. The Strange Tale of Madman. Mike is featured on the radio station's website. While on television, Mike informed Art and his audience that he had run stop calls for the next three days. Because of the donations from his listeners, his second time machine delivered more power than the first one. His initial plan was to test the machine on himself to ensure he could form an electromagnetic vortex powerful enough for a person to walk through. A year later, when Mike returned to the radio show, one of the listeners asked what item he would bring for his time travel trip. He simply said that he would take his cell phone with him. When he came on the show in 1996, he claimed he was just 30 days away from starting the legal time machine. Nevertheless, 
In 1997, he disappeared without anyone knowing where he was and was never seen since, making him a famous puzzle in the time travel business. This is not all of it. In the following weeks, one of the radio show listeners called in and shared a chilling experience they had recently had. As the listener says, the police found a deceased man on the beach in California in the 1930s. The man was trapped inside an odd metal tube, and a strange device resembling a cell phone was found a few yards from the body. However, somehow, Mike popped up online in 2022 and brushed aside the crazy rumors that he might have missed a return flight to the 1930s. Furthermore, he was said to have been interviewed for the third time by his local radio station in 2015. In February of that year, Mike appeared to post about paranormal activity on a blog named Real Madman Markham. The user had been registered on the website since 2015. He wrote, Rumors are circulating that I am still alive, not well, and have time traveled to 1930 or such, where I perished on a beach in a tube. Whoever posted those photos of a redhead is not me. Long ago, someone mistakenly identified a schoolboy with my name as me. Whatever was discovered in the 1930s was not me, and I've read that it was dismissed, but can't find the source. When asked about his plans for a time machine, he replied, Yes, but it is currently stalled until I can get some inverters. I have several 24-volt panels in my bus for a project. They grew a little messy after sitting outside for a while. His admirers have pushed him to show proof that he is the real Mike Madman, but he has yet to do so. As a result, it is still being determined whether Mike still exists. Some suspect that Mike simply changed his name and chose to live a quiet life away from the spotlight, while others feel his time machine experiment was a success. While many physicists believe that time travel is impossible, some hypotheses and theories in theoretical physics suggest that it may be possible with significant difficulties. Let's look at an intriguing concept that suggests the possibility of time travel, the unexpected deceleration. Of time, Einstein's theory of general relativity states that time is naturally related to space, a phenomenon known as space-time. When huge objects approach gravitational fields, they can produce time dilation, slowing time. Such an effect depends on atomic clocks riding high-speed aircraft or under high gravitational fields. In the quest to travel into the past, adjustments such as closed time-like curves commonly known as CTCs, have been formulated. CTC is a hypothetical space-time loop through which objects or people can travel backwards and return to their starting position. Certain answers to the general relativity equation include the Gödel metric, which involves the existence of rotating planets that can be used to support a space-time loop. However, CTCs are not the ideal solution. CTCs can create paradoxes like the well-known grandfather paradox, where a person can unintentionally deny his existence or draw faulty conclusions. Solving such paradoxes involves a thorough investigation of space-time consistency and causality. Some MIT physicists have proposed using quantum teleportation and post-selecting what a time traveler could and could not do to avoid the grandfather paradox but this is still only a theory. Quantum mechanics adds another level of difficulty to time travel. The uncertainty principle, also known as Heisenberg's indeterminacy principle, is a key idea in quantum physics that says there are natural limitations to the accuracy with which certain pairs of attributes, such as position and momentum, may be known or measured simultaneously. However, some interpretations of quantum mechanics propose that alternate timelines or parallel universes exist where every possible consequence of a quantum event occurs. More scientific hypotheses than ever before support the existence of other universes alongside our own. Still, one of the most debated scientific hypotheses is the multiverse theory. The universe in which we inhabit is incredibly large. 
galaxies, each containing billions or trillions of stars, spin around in space in hundreds of billions, if not trillions. Some scientists studying galaxy models believe the universe could be 7 billion light years in circumference. However, certain scientific theories have studied and in some cases supported the notion that there are realms outside, parallel to or distant from our own, that mirror our own, going beyond what is visible to us in the physical moment we live in. Arguments about multiverses and parallel worlds are commonly argued alongside other major scientific hypotheses such as string theory and the Big Bang theory. However, it is vital to highlight that these ideas do not support traveling between these multiple universes, which is often considered impossible. Even if we could travel between these realms, would it be termed time travel? Despite these exciting hypotheses, time travel has faced several challenges. For example, the energy requirements for time travel offer major challenges because present technology is not up to the task especially when traveling through CTCs and exotic materials. Time travel to the past needs the utilization of wormholes. But time travel to the future involves traveling at the speed of light. Both types of time travel are difficult to perform since we have yet to reach the point in technology where we can accelerate objects faster than light, nor do we have operational wormhole devices lying around. The same holds for the energy required. Most time travel theories require negative mass or energy, neither of which can exist in our universe. Furthermore, while some physicists have proposed a time machine free of negative matter, that machine would require more energy than the cosmos could contain. There is also difficulty with dark energy and dark matter. The theoretical condition calls into doubt the existence and stability of these dark matter particles. Furthermore, the concept of quantum gravity remains essentially theoretical due to a lack of supporting data and our limited comprehension. With time travel, when we are set to process complicated things, we have no concept of them and cannot even imagine using them. The concepts of time travel that we are familiar with today are far more complicated than we have come to understand. In sum, time travel, even as a scientific concept, can rather be attributed to a group of theoretical rather than practical theories. Time travel is more than just stepping into a time machine and specifying the destination's date. Even though there is no scientific proof that time travel is achievable, there are cases when people claim to have somehow traveled to a period other than their present, as in the curious affair of Sir Victor Godard, who accidentally traveled into the future. Sir Victor Goddard, the man who accidentally traveled to the future air marshal. Sir Robert Victor Goddard unintentionally journeyed four years into the future. In 1935, Goddard was deployed as a wing commander to an airfield at Drem near Edinburgh, which had been abandoned. While Sir Goddard flew over this camp, he observed that it was being neglected and the asphalt was littered with weeds and cattle all over it. He could see that the airbase was abandoned, dirty, and neglected due to a long period of no maintenance. Eventually, when he lifted off from his plane, Sir Goddard encountered an unusual type of storm. Intense winds and brown and yellow-colored storm clouds were set around him in the eye of the storm. As a result, he lost control of his plane, which started to spiral down toward a crash. On the contrary, he recovered control, and the plane flew out of the storm to sunlight in the bright sky. Once, a gloomy and rather stormy day suddenly turned bright and quiet. And, if that wasn't strange enough, he noticed that the airbase he had previously inspected was now in fantastic condition and even operational. He noticed some mechanics wearing blue coveralls on yellow planes parked on the runway. The aircraft were different from those used by the Air Force in 1935, which was surprising. Interestingly, Sir Goddard failed to identify one of the planes. It was beyond his comprehension how any renovation work could be performed in such a short period. Furthermore, 
these mechanics did not even wear the customary khaki uniforms worn by mechanics in 1935. It also didn't make sense that the planes were yellow as the Air Force painted all of its planes silver. Sir Goddard must have tried everything to explain the strange event, but when he returned to Drem four years later during a European war, he was in shock for his life. He observed the same thing at the air base he had inspected four years before. He noticed the same mechanics wearing blue coveralls working on the identical yellow planes. He even discovered the Miles Magister, the plane he had previously been unable to identify. Many doubters believe Sir Goddard became confused. They assume he landed elsewhere in 1935 rather than at the abandoned airbase in Drem. However, this does not explain all of the facts of his extraordinary story. The Miles Magister, for example, made its first flight in 1937, two years after Sir Goddard spotted it on the runway at Drem. The colors of the mechanic uniforms and planes were not used until years later, and the unusual storm that abruptly vanished to reveal a brilliantly sunny day all hint at a supernatural experience that cannot be easily explained. Sir Goddard was not the only person who claimed to have accidentally traveled through time. Another occurrence occurred when three individuals claimed to have witnessed a time traveler from the past. The occurrence on Highway 167, Kenmo's story. Time Traveler appeared in Strange Magazine 2 in 1988. According to the brief story, on October 20th, 1969, LC and his business partner Charlie drove down Highway 167 into the oil center city of Lafayette, Louisiana. They were coming from Abbeville, Louisiana, where they had lunch. It was exactly 1.30 p.m. The sky was bright and blue, and the temperature was cool at 60 degrees. This, in turn, led to the car windows being down and in cruise mode. As they went down the highway, they saw another car that was moving at a slow pace. This might have been entirely missed, but when the car got closer and they saw it heading towards them, it caught their attention. It looked unusual. The old turtleback automobile caught their eyes the moment they saw it. Although it looked like an old piece that reminded him of the past, its condition was brand new, as if it had just been bought from an antique shop. L.C., along with his business partner, were very intrigued by this car, so they had a good look at it as they closed in. They saw it had a distinctive, huge orange license plate bearing the year 1940. They instantly concluded that this ancient car could not be lawfully driven on the road except for ceremonial purposes. Elsie decided to look closely at the driver of this vehicle and was startled to find a young lady dressed strangely. She wore a vintage 1940s dress with a headpiece decorated with colored feathers and a fur coat that seemed out of place in 1969. A young child in a thick coat and cap stood on the passenger seat. Because of how the child was dressed, it was difficult to determine the gender. Aside from the fact that such a style of clothing was absolutely out of trend in 1969, it was also unusual that they were dressed so heavily in such cool weather. It didn't make sense for the lady to have her windows rolled up when she might have enjoyed the breeze. As Elsie and Charlie approached the vehicle, they were taken aback by the lady's active display of fright and panic. She appeared extremely distressed and glanced back and forth as if she were lost or desperately needed help. L.C. called out to see if she needed assistance, and she nodded positively. She appeared to be inspecting L.C.'s vehicle with a confused look. Cars from the 1940s are higher than cars from the 1960s, like the one L.C. was driving, forcing the woman to gaze down at them. For some reason, Probably because her windows were rolled up, the woman appeared to have difficulty hearing Elsie and Charlie. At some point, Elsie signaled for her to park on the side of the road, and she appeared to comprehend after many gestures. When they reached a standstill and turned to look for her, she was nowhere to be seen. Highway 167 is an open road with no hiding places for cars, so it was odd that she and her car were nowhere to be found. She had disappeared into thin air. Meanwhile, a vehicle that had been following the antique car parked in front of them. 
the car's driver hurriedly approached their vehicle to inquire about what had happened to the car in front of him. He was so puzzled that he assumed there had been an accident between LC's and the antique car. The three men shared accounts about what they had just witnessed. The third man, an out-of-towner, asked them to contact the police because he thought it was a case of missing a person. But LC and his friend refused because they had no idea where the lady and child had gone. The three exchanged phone numbers and addresses and remained in touch for years to ensure that what they had witnessed was not a fabrication of their imagination. It needs to be clarified whether the lady and her child were time travelers from 1940 or were eternally trapped in limbo, appearing in many timelines but never returning to their own. While LC, his business partner, and the out-of-towner saw a time traveler, these two journalists saw a news story 11 years before it occurred. The news broke, 11 years before it actually happened. In the little giant book of eerie thrills and unspeakable chills, authors Ron Edwards, C.B. Colby, and John Macklin tell the odd story of two individuals who experienced an event 11 years before it occurred. In 1932, Reporter J. Bernard Hutton and photographer Joachim Brandt covered the Hamburg shipyard in Germany for a major piece. Just as Hutton and Brandt were about to leave the building after finishing their mission, they heard the sound of aircraft engines and looked up to find a sky full of fighter planes. The anti-aircraft batteries had come into action as bombs were being dropped and detonated. In a flash, the area had turned into a full war zone. There was chaos and death everywhere. Things were exploding everywhere and buildings were crumbling. Before running outside to save their lives, Hutton had asked a security guard if there was anything they could do to help, but was told to leave the area immediately. Afraid for their lives and unsure of what was happening, the two drove towards Hamburg. But as they got into Hamburg, they noticed that things had changed. The sky had cleared up and everything was back to normal. Gone were the chaos and the violence. The buildings were fine and no one seemed to be panicking. It was almost as if they had not just been running from massive airstrikes. When Hutton and Brandt looked behind them towards the shipyard, they couldn't spot anything out of place. There was no damage, no smoke coming from the buildings, not even a wisp. As expected, the newspaper office did not accept the two men's story, and who could blame them? Brandt, who had quickly shown the photos he had taken during the attack, must have been shocked to see that everything looked normal. The shipyard looked brand new. Their co-workers rejected their crazy story of calamity, assuming that they had stopped for a drink and had one too many. They believed that the alcohol had influenced the men's eyesight. Bernard Hutton later moved to London, just before World War II began. In 1943, he was stunned by what he read in the newspaper that morning. He must have felt someone was pulling a cruel trick on him. The information from a story he was reading about, a Roy Air Force Squadron's successful raid on a Hamburg shipyard, struck him as odd and unsettling. It was an identical replica of what he and Brandt had seen 11 years prior. While we've discussed accounts of people who happened to go through time or witnessed time travel without doing anything about it, one man was determined to make a big deal out of his time travel adventure. The man who traveled back in time to become a street scam artist. On January 28, 2003, the Federal Bureau of Investigation, or FBI, detained Andrew Carlson on suspicion of insider trading. Andrew increased his net worth from $800 to $350 million in just two weeks by investing in the stock market. He is said to have executed 126 high-risk trades without losing a single cent. Everything he touched turned to gold, almost as if he had the Midas touch. It was considered impossible to make such a large profit in the stock market in such a short period. This raised the Securities Exchange Commission's suspicions, and the FBI was brought in to arrest and investigate him on fraud and insider trading charges. In an unexpected turn of events, when questioned by the FBI while in their custody, he revealed that he was from 2256. He said that, because he was from the future, he knew exactly how the stocks would perform 
allowing him to make many profitable investments. Carlson also claimed to be able to prove that he had time-traveled by providing details about Osama bin Laden's whereabouts and the treatment for AIDS. Naturally, the cops did not think he was telling the truth. Although they believed he was lying, he appeared to have vanished completely from the earth shortly after being out on bond. Despite many efforts by the feds, every search for him turned empty. It is interesting to note that Carlson wasn't an overnight sensation, but bizarrely, his story starts with his unexpected appearance in the early 2000s. Before then, no records indicated he was ever alive. No birth certificate, school records, medical records, driving license, or anything else. Many have claimed that Andrew Carlson could not have been a time traveler because he could not convince the feds of that fact while he was under their custody. Some have said he was a good scam artist who could evade the government and anyone looking for him. However, here's an interesting fact. He correctly predicted the exact date of the U.S. invasion of Iraq. So what is the truth behind time travel? Is time travel real? The reality of time travel. Time travel is often defined or believed to be a malleable concept one can alter. Some believe time travel is a scientific phenomenon that has occurred in the past. Some also believe time travel has not occurred, but is a completely possible and universal concept. Others believe one cannot engage with or interact with someone before or after the present year. Despite one's position on time travel, one cannot deny the fascinating aspects of the possibility that time is a metaphorical game of hopscotch. Margaret Atwood said, Time is not a line, but a dimension, like the dimensions of space. If you can bend space, you can bend time also, and if you knew enough and could move faster than light, you could travel backwards in time and exist in two places simultaneously. Thanks for watching these interesting accounts of time travelers. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe for more interesting videos.